become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today I'd like to continue on the Bronze Era Diet series and focus on George Hackenschmidt's Bronze Era Diet and Nutritional Recommendations. I've previously presented the two major types of diets that were followed during the Bronze Era, being namely a the um, lacto-ovo vegetarian diet that was followed by the likes of Bernard McFadden, and the high protein, high fat diet scheme as followed by the Saxon brothers and to a lesser extent by the great Eugene Sandow. But it is very interesting to note that George Hackenschmidt, also known as the Russian lion at the time, had a more balanced diet, not opting to go for either extreme if you could call the lacto over diet, um, sorry, the lacto over vegetarian diet or the um, high protein, high fat diet extremes. Now, this information from this video today is taken directly from George Hackenschmidt's book, The Way to Live, and I hope you enjoy this presentation. Now, if you own The Way to Live, written by George Hackenschmidt, I recommend you read chapter 5, where he goes through his nutritional recommendations and basically what he eats um, as a diet. Uh, if, if we read from the first paragraph of the nutritional chapter, I come now to the much discussed subject, what ought we to eat? I believe I am right in asserting that our creator has provided food and nutriment for every being for its own advantage. This is a very important sentence to start off with. Man is born without frying pan or stew pot. The purest natural food for human beings would therefore be fresh, uncooked food and nuts. It is not my intention to discuss here the old problem whether meat is necessary as food for man, or whether man was created and should remain a vegetarian. My experience has taught me that foodstuffs are of secondary importance. There are very strong people who are strict vegetarians, whilst others eat a good deal of meat. A fare which consists of three quarters of vegetable food and one quarter meat would appear to be the most satisfactory for the people of Central Europe, including himself, of course. And so... We can actually learn from this very first chapter that um, the Russian lion recommended basically to eat a, if you have your plate, right, of food, it should contain three quarters of plant-based food and one quarter of, uh, of meat-based food. So that is basically what represented George Hackenschmidt's diet, of course, with the addition of uh, fruits and nuts, etc. in there, um, as he actually talks about during this paragraph. Now, what I really enjoy about this particular paragraph is that he then goes on to say the following. Everyone should and can find out which diet best suits his own constitution. I added in own. And he should avoid all food which disagrees with it. Um, this is really, to me, really important. And it really does reflect the variety of diets that occurred during the Bronze Era, Silver Era, Golden Era, and even nowadays. In summary, what he's trying to say is eat what is best for you. If you are allergic to a certain food, then why would you eat it? It doesn't matter what authority tells you to do it. Um, you have to basically find out what is best for you. If you find that you can't digest certain foods properly, then I guess it's best to avoid them. And that's a these are fantastic words of wisdom. Now, what I really like about this chapter is that it further goes on to, to truly reflect uh, George Hackenschmidt's view on animal welfare. In essence, he tells you if you are going to eat meat, honor the animal. Make sure that it is high welfare meat. Um, and uh, yeah, he even goes on to say that you should basically eat m all of the animal, not just focus on the muscle itself, on the muscle tissue. Eat the organs. Here is the, the paragraph that basically um, t uh, says these recommendations. The disadvantages of meat foods are, in my opinion, in the first place, that nowadays it is most difficult to obtain meat from absolutely healthy animals. I count those artificially fed in stables and pens among the unhealthy ones. And it's amusing to actually read this because this is over a hundred years ago. And um, you can really tell that even back then, the, the question of animal welfare um, was already you know, in people's minds, as it, as it definitely is nowadays. And secondly, 
that far too much flesh food is taken. Now, when we take everything from that first, uh, from that chapter five, sorry, on nutrition, where Hackenschmidt is talking about eating uncooked foods, eating ideally high welfare meats if you are eating meat in the diet, and um, you know, eat, not just eating flesh, he's basically recommending that you eat high welfare meat, raw as well if possible. And the organs should also be eaten. This is, of course, if you decide to eat meat in the diet. So you can really see um, how, in that respect, George Hackenschmidt definitely honoured the whole beast. And this is something that was definitely practised, um, I guess, a long time ago, where people would eat the organs. They were actually prized meats, so to speak. Not nowadays, where, we, where a lot of people just focus on eating um, the muscle tissue. But we're talking about heart, liver, kidneys, brain, the blood, everything was basically eaten. So in that respect, I really have to respect George Hackenschmidt's recommendations on honoring the animal. And if you are eating an animal, that it should be high welfare and that you should definitely eat as much of it as possible and not discard it because um, those other foods such as organs really do have a high, they are high, high nutrient dense and, and should definitely be included in a person in a person's diet that includes animal proteins. Now throughout the chapter, George Hackenschmidt goes through further recommendations, which we basically should mostly abide to, to avoid sugar, of course, alcohol, smoking. And interestingly, at least back then, coffee, which was um, which is a stimulant, was actually um, seen as a, as a uh, stress to the body. Whereas nowadays, uh, science has proven that it's actually very beneficial to prevent uh, inflammation and it's actually used caffeine at least is, is used as a as a um, pre-workout so um, I wouldn't necessarily um, take that into consideration but definitely the avo the avoidance of sugar alcohol and smoking is, is a very uh, important recommendation given by George Hackenschmidt excess eating of course um, was also frowned upon and he does state like many physical culturists did back then that breathing is so so important um, and not just deep not just breathing but deep breathing oxygen is essential it is a necessary part of our life but not just that he actually says that it is the most important food for humans and I would have to agree with him there in a stressed lifestyle where you don't have the opportunity to deep to do deep breathing it is necessary to practice and so I like that he actually mentions that in the nutrition chapter deep breathing is very important and to really accelerate your breathing, he recommends, of course, running. Running as often as possible. Um, it's an excellent exercise to get your cardiovascular um, system up and working and to, of course, increase your oxygen uptake and the elim elimination sorry, of waste products from the body. Fantastic recommendations given by George Hackenschmidt, the Russian lion. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the Bronze Era diets, and forms of training, I highly recommend you visit my website www.goldenerabookworm.com where you'll find titles from Bernard McFadden, George Hackenschmidt, Eugene Sandow, you name it, it's there. Visit my website www.goldenerabookworm.com So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video on the Russian Lion's Bronze Era Diet and his nutritional recommendations uh, for physical culture. If you've enjoyed watching the video, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era Bookworm. Leave me your comments and thank you for watching. If you'd like to support my work, please donate via PayPal or become a patron. You can also visit my website www.goldenerabookworm.com for out of print books and courses on old school bodybuilding and physical culture. And if you'd like to get in touch to pass on any books or magazines on physical culture, on bodybuilding, on weightlifting, um, or memorabilia, photos, whatever, please get in touch. I'm always uh, willing to receive these to add to my collection. Thanks very much again for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Bye for now. And for an entertaining look at the history of bodybuilding's supplement industry, I would highly recommend watching Subs the Movie, which I have collaborated in, available at Amazon Prime and Vimeo. I just want to recommend this phenomenal book, Vince's Secret Locker, volume number two by Carl Coyne. 
I've been looking at this for about four weeks and I can't put it down. If you get a chance, check it out. He also has a part one that I, I highly recommend also. Uh, Vince was the trainer of the stars and had an amazing, interesting gym that today there's still on equipment like, uh, like it around. It was all made out of wood. Uh, he'll be on our radio show coming up probably in the next couple weeks or so. Have a great day and again, highly recommend this book.